Welcome to the Gospel Truth. I'm Alan Jackson, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for this another outpouring of his tender love and mercy, and that he has allowed me once again to be on this to time side of life and to have this another blessed privilege to come to you in his name by way of this television medium and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as I always do, I'd like to continue to express my appreciation and my gratitude to the production staff for their continued service to the gospel truth. And it is my prayer that God will continue to bless each one of them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And I'm praying on your behalf as participant observers. And it is my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family with all of those things that he knows that you're standing in need of as well. And then, of course, I am encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer. And it's only God who can provide me with those things that I am standing in need of. All right, so this evening, before we do get into our message, I do have my prayer list and a song. So right now we're going to uh, go to our prayer list and today we continue to pray on behalf of Annette Jeffrey, Geraldine Keyes, Emma Jean Hayes, Elizabeth Adams, Yvonne Davis, the Ahmad Aubrey family, the Brianna Taylor family, Teresa Watson, Virginia Daniels, Teresa Wanzo, and uh, Joe Brokaw. Brother Josie Pitt Sr., Shelton, or that Sheldon Horton, Jim Young, Nancy Lagardi, the Richard Brooks family, Shelley Lopez County, Cornelius County, Shirley Finn, Jacob Blake and family, the Daniel Prude family. We're praying also on behalf of Annie Riley and the Flowers family. We're praying on behalf of... Uh, Perlene Jesse, Candace Powers, Terrence Bailey, Wilma Carpenter, Sherry Drumgoo, Betty Williams of The Connection, Bethany Williams, Vanita Coates, James Sankey, uh, Brianna King. And we're also praying on behalf of Brother James Walker Sr., Dorothy Lofton, Brenda Williams for her brother and sister, the George Floyd family, Tyrone King. And we also are praying on behalf of these bereaved families, and that's the Earl Simmons family, DMX, and we're continuing to pray on behalf of the George Floyd family, Matthew Johnson and family, family of Matthew, Matthew lost his son, uh, Matthew the third so we're praying that his family will be comforted during this time of their bereavement and we're also praying on behalf of the Dante Wright family and remember Prince Philip so remember when you go to God and pray if you just be kind enough to pray for those on the gospel truth prayer list and if you don't know their names or don't remember them that's all right God knows who they are and uh, he will bless them according to his riches and glory. And you will be blessed immensely as a result of praying on behalf of people perhaps that you don't even know. All right, so right now we're going to get to our song. This evening we're going to be led in a congregational song by Brother Paul Williamson. And he's leading the song, Our God, He Is Alive. So without any further remarks, Paul Williamson. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
We certainly would like to express our appreciation and our gratitude to Brother Williamson for leading us in that fine song, Our God, He Is Alive. This evening, I'd like to call your attention to the book of Revelations, and that would be Revelations, the second chapter, and the verse is number 10. And the Bible reads thusly, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and you shall have t tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So it's from this verse this evening that I am selecting for a subject, Be Thou Faithful. Be Thou Faithful. Now during this episode of COVID-19, with this sickness and death all over the world. And just speaking of that, tomorrow, uh -huh, which will be May the 17th, will reflect uh, one year in which my daughter has now been gone. The Lord called her on Sunday 
May the 17th, 2020. And so as a result of that, uh, my heart has had an empty space there, and we continue to pray on behalf of her family. My daughter Allison was truly loved by her father. Our faith has been challenged. The fear of the unknown has caused a change in our lifestyles. We began adopting new safety precautions, masking, spacing, washing our hands, staying at home, uh, avoiding travel, and avoiding large gatherings. Our religious practices have been modified. We have entered into cyberspace by way of the Zoom technology to worship God. This too shall pass to us who believe in the God of, uh, that's the Godhead of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we must resume our practicing of assembling for worship. So I've come by tonight to encourage you to continue to be faithful to the Lord. And we are told in the Holy Scriptures, Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more the, as you see the day Approaching, So we want to make sure that we get ready and get back into the household of faith that we can worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And we have to be faithful in everything we do and faithful in the handling of the Bible. The Bible lets us know over there in 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Now, I have heard recently that the Old Testament is obsolete. Now, I'll tell you, I'm, I heard that, all right? Now, I don't say that because the Bible contains the mind of God. The whole Bible is God's Word. And we learn from the Word of God for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. That's Revelation, or excuse me, Romans 4, 15 and 4. That's Romans 15 and 4. And so you see those things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. So somebody would say today that the, the Old Testament is obsolete. They must be crazy out of their mind. You see, when we talk about faith in this day and time, what we have to do is we refer to the Old Testament to see how faith worked. We can see how faith worked in the case of Abraham. We can see how faith worked in the case of Daniel. We can see how faith worked in the case of the Hebrew boys, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, just to name a few. We can also look back and see how Jonah prayed from the belly of a big fish, okay? So this helps us to see how our faith works, and it reinforces us to continue to maintain the faith that we should have in the Lord. All right? So now, again, be thou faithful. And this is the time that Peter warned us of, all right? So, uh, you know, we've been out of our congregations, and while we were out of our congregations, things begin to happen. Things begin to brew. And if you will, let's go with me tonight over to the book of Acts, and we'll understand what Peter was talking about. This is Acts, the 20th chapter, and beginning with about verse number 29. This is Acts, the 20th chapter, and the verse is number 29. This is what we need to understand, all right? So in verse number 29, the Bible says, For I know this. Now, this is Peter saying, for I know this. What do you know, Peter? That after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things 
to draw away disciples from them. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. So we just have to understand that those things are happening uh, and then we, uh, we receive another warning from Peter, if you will, over there in the book of uh, uh, Second Peter, the second chapter. All right. He further warns us about false prophets, false teachers. This is what he says. This is uh, Second Peter, the second chapter, verses one through nine. But there were false prophets also among you, among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them in, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many, the Bible says, and many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness, shall they with feign words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto the judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, uh -huh, the, the eight persons, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning uh -huh, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them. And seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from the day to day with their unlawful deeds. Now this is what you keep in mind. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. All right? So all of those who are seeking to undermine the truth and bring uh, their own little parties together so they can try to overthrow the current administration in our church, we need to understand that we who are Christians, uh -huh, must be strong. Therefore, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your work in the Lord is not in vain. So continue doing your good things, good works in the Lord, and it's not going to be in vain. In fact, the Lord is going to bless you for your continued service uh, for him, to him. All right? Be faithful. We have a responsibility to be faithful servants. Uh, Jesus asked the question, who can find a faithful servant? Over there in Matthew 24 and the verses number 25. What do we know about a servant? A servant serves. That's right. He serves by serving in the church. All right? Why? Because the church is the only place uh -huh, that he can glorify God. Jesus said that a tree is known by the fruit that it bears. All right? So what are we able to see this? All you have to do is simply open your eyes and you can see the fruit that's on the tree. So if I'm walking uh -huh, in an orchard, I know that those are either apples because I can see them, or they're peaches, or pears, or whatever the fruit is. Jesus said it's known by the fruit that it bears. You don't have to ask anybody, or you don't have to say to somebody, well, just ask them about what I've been doing. No, no, no. You 
I should be able to see the fruit that is on your tree. So we need to understand this. For the tree, as Jesus said, is known by its fruit. And you can believe your eyes. I think I heard that statement during the uh, trial of uh, Derek Chauvin. And I think the defense attorney said, you can believe your eyes. In other words, you saw what you saw. Uh huh. And I see what I see when I look at you in terms of the fruit that is on your tree. So remember this evening, we're talking about be thou faithful. And as we continue to be faithful in the Lord, we know that if we are, then of course we will please the Lord. And we must continue to believe in him. Hebrews 11 and 6, we have to continue to trust in him. Even during this period of the pandemic, and we're still going through it, now, I understand that restrictions are being lifted, all right, but we still have to continue uh, practicing uh, the various precautions of wearing a mask and, and keeping our hands clean and, and, and maintaining a, a reasonable distance. It's been six feet, but the bottom line is we understand that it is subsiding, but it's not over. So if you haven't had your one and done or two and through, then you need to make sure that when the time comes for you, that you get on over to the facility that will be administering uh -huh, that uh, uh, vaccine for you, all right? And just keep in mind, you have to continue to be faithful in the Lord. The Lord wants us always to use wise judgment. So if you look at somebody and you see, or let's just say, for example, you see a, a group of soldiers marching in a formation and there happens to be one that's out of step, then you don't want to say, oh, that's my son. He's the only one in step. What does that tell you? Uh -huh. Well, just keep that in mind. So we must continue to practice our belief and our faith in the Lord because that is the only way that we can please him. Remember, Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So faith is important. And that's the only way that we can convince the Lord today that we love him is how faithful we are and by doing his will. So we must believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That's right. God sent him into this world to be the sacrificial lamb for all of us. So we must accept the fact, John the 14th chapter, the verse is number one, that Jesus uh -huh, is who we must trust in and believe in in order for us to be able to please the, the Lord and make heaven our home. And he says over there in John 14 and the verse is number one, he says, let your heart not be troubled, all right? Let not your heart be troubled. All right, if you believe in God, you believe also in me. No reader, having a troubled heart, if you trust in the Lord, if you believe in Jesus, then you believe in God. All right? And we, we believe in him because, of course, he is a rewarder of all of us who will diligently seek him. All right? And then keeping in mind that we must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. This is the faith. Faith is our belief. John 3.16 lets us know that Jesus, uh -huh, he must be believed. If we don't believe him, then we're going to suffer a damnable loss. John, the third chapter and the verse number 16, and you can hear these words that are written. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. All right? If you believe in him, then you should not perish and you should have everlasting life. But now if you don't believe, then right off the top, you already know that you're going to be condemned to hell as a result of your disbelief, all right? We must believe and trust in the Lord that he is the Son of God. And keeping in mind that there's just one faith. And I know some of us have a hard time accepting that and dealing with that particular reality. But the Bible is clear and it's very plain. All you have to do is accept what's written upon the pages of inspiration, and then you certainly will not have a problem with what is written. And if you just listen to the book Ephesians, the fourth chapter, uh-huh, and the verses number five, this is what the Bible says. One Lord, 
one faith and one baptism. There is one body and one spirit, even as you're called in your hope of your calling. All right? One way to the Lord. One body, that's his church. Uh-huh. And that's how we're going to get to the Lord. Coming to him by faith, repentance, confession, and baptism. And by doing those things, the Lord will add you to his body, which is his church. And then, if you live a faithful life, and that's why I'm encouraging you tonight to be thou faithful. So until next week, I'm encouraging you to join us again next week, if it's God's will, when the gospel truth will once again come your way, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. Until then, it is my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family and to keep you all safe.